Hi, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri appellate attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense on YouTube. Today we're going to talk about communications and in particular um, how to get information when people don't want to give it up. I'll have more on that in just a moment. So the other day I was asked to do a deposition and to just be real frank, I hate depositions. Uh, as I've mentioned probably on here before, depositions are just an opportunity for the other people to lie to you. And I have found that quite frequently people do lie to you. They say things that they know aren't true, but they assume that because you can't prove them, nothing bad will ever happen to them. And indeed, I suspect that is probably the case. Uh, most of the time, when people lie in depositions, it just hurts their case. But sometimes um, what is really effective in getting the most out of other people when you want information is just listening. I'll give you a good example. Let's suppose that you have an employee that you think has been taking money out of the cash register. Now, you don't have video, but you've had a couple of people tell you this. And inevitably, every time somebody comes and tells you this, they say, don't use my name, but I saw so-and-so take money. So, let me give you an example of the best way to get information out of someone who probably doesn't want to give it. You bring them in, you sit them down across from you, and you say, I have had several reports that you have been taking money from the cash register. Is that true? Now, somebody who has made a habit of this and someone who is familiar with how systems work will simply say, no, who told you that? At that point, you have to say, I can't tell you who told me that. I'm just asking you if that's true. And again, if they're smart, they simply say, nope, it's not true. Well, what are you going to do at that point? Well, you have to have at least the, um, the appearance of a reasonable suspicion. And what you do there is you say, well, I heard that on Tuesday you were at the drawer, you had just sold something, and instead of putting all of the cash into the cash register, you put something into your left front pocket. And then you don't say anything. You just sit there and look at them. Now, one of two things happens. Again, if the person is just really savvy and probably somebody you don't want on your staff, you, they'll sit there and say, never happened. And they'll shut up. But my mama used to say that a guilty conscience needs no accuser. And indeed, usually when you do something like this, when, when you confront someone like this, they will start talking. And normally what they do is they start talking about everybody else. Well, you know, Bob, uh, Bob's only supposed to get one uh, free drink every day, but he gets three. And Sally, she's not supposed to uh, work on the, uh, on the drive-thru window, but she works on the drive-thru window all the time. And nobody says anything. And you know, then they will list all of their grievances. But of course, none of this is responsive to your question. So you let them burn themselves out. And then when they're done, you say, so what I understand is that basically you have a lot of disagreements with your coworkers. And to solve those disagreements, you took money from the cash register because I didn't hear you deny it. 
And sometimes people will actually admit it, and then you can do what you need to do. Other times, they break down and say, well, you know, I had to take my dog to the vet. It cost a lot more money than I thought. I needed some extra money, and, did, 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 and they'll have an excuse. And again, you have to make a decision about what you want to do in that situation. But silence can often be the most effective tool of an interrogation. You just sit there and listen, and you maintain eye contact. Because one thing that happens when you maintain eye contact is they always look away. When people are not doing the right thing, they always look away. They shift their eyes. They look everywhere in the room except at you. And the reason they do that is because they are afraid that you can see the mendacity in them. So again, pay attention to how people react and usually you will get your answer. At any rate, I hope you found this interesting. If you haven't already, please go over here and subscribe to our channel and touch the notification bell so you can be notified whenever we release a video on this channel. In addition, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate a thumbs up on this so that you can let YouTube know that this content is good for other people and helpful. Thank you so much for watching and have a terrific day. I'll catch you on here next time.